comandos. She's Marley going single. She's had her problems, not real problems, this was it, but obviously a mare of 14 years old that we're just trying to, you know, you can't teach old dog new tricks. Well, it's a fair comment, I suppose. You can't treat, teach old horses, or put it this way, yes, you can, but you've got to go about it in a different way. You don't have the influence like any dad has over a child, you know. They look up to you, they look, well, he's of, uh, you know, they don't do that anymore necessarily when they've been around a while, you know. And this one, the downside of this one, I think it's never really been asked to go the extra mile, yeah. So it's finding it difficult to do that. So what do I mean by that? Well, she's never really been what I would call disciplined. So... She would pour the ground. She would um, be impatient. She would um, she would be impatient. She would, um, in in general, fidget when you brought her outside. So we wouldn't put the vehicle on straight away. God bless, mate. So, you know, just to get her used to standing. So even now, um, we're three quarters of the way through her training. She's taken to the single work very well. If you look at her towel, it's off her quarters. The lady thought she had um, sweet itch because she was scratching her towel, you know, rubbing it. So she clipped it off so that she could cream it, etc., and maintain it. But it never had that at all. It had pinworm. So <laughs> that was had an itchy bottom, obviously, and rubbed its tail for that reason. But it's grown back now. I've clipped her ears out, and she's going to be fully clipped out tomorrow. Um, but I've, I've clipped her ears out for the reason. If you look at all she's ears, there's veins running over it. And it, if I find, if you clip the inside of the ear out um, at this time of year. Um, you find that they act like a radiator, cools the blood a little bit, and it does work really well. Yeah, if you look at the inside, there is got quite a few um, chances of using it like a radiator. Yeah, so. but she's going well. She's pretty good with everything now. And there's a football match going on across here, you can see, and they're shouting and calling and that type of thing, and. Um, she deals with that lovely, you know. A couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, in a pair, she wouldn't have dealt with that so well. She would be uptight. She'd hear the noise and wondering what's happening, you know. So, so then she will bring her over here now. These people are kindly waiting for us. People say they have a lot of trouble with cars. We never have any trouble at all, really. Just treat them with the respect and, you know, don't think just because you've got all you own the road, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so she's going sweet. The other thing is with this horse for her age, she's very, very, you know, bouncy, rubbery. So, uh, she puts her feet down a, a bit heavy, if you just listen now to the note of her shoe as it lands. But the reason for that is we've got driving plates on her. Um, when the farrier come, he comes to shoe another horse, and... Uh, he, he shot this one. Um, at, the, at the time when he was here, you know, he shot this one. So, 
and what he had in the van was heavy driving plate which he had for another horse that was due to come in so he just popped him on this one but even so she's very light on her feet for the size of all she is I'm sorry if I'm keep um, you know stopping giving a commentary on what I'm doing but I've got my mates here driving Steph she's come down and the reason I've put Steph on the reins is because she's coming she's three quarters away for her training a lady's going to drive it and so Steph has driven this in a pair but not a single I don't think so therefore it's nice to have a different pair of hands on the reins and the horse still be comfortable and happy in what we're asking it to do so you can see these motor cars coming past whatever we've seen so far she's perfectly happy with and that's lovely um, but a nice free moving mare you know if I just put this down here you'll see I mean, she's not a big stepper or anything like that, but she's free moving. She's 14 years old, and the muscles she's using now are nothing to do with the muscles she would use when being ridden. So, entirely, uh, entirely different muscles. So, a horse, I've told this before, I've said this before, but a horse has never pulled a cart in its life. Unless you tied it to its tail, then it would be pulling it. But what it's actually doing is laying its body weight onto the collar, whether it be a neck collar or a breast collar, and that weight that it provides onto the collar is what gives the carriage the motion forward. The same as the bridging at the back, when it applies its weight into the bridging, it will push the vehicle back. So, this mare has, has learnt this very, very quickly, which is um, really surprising for her age. Because you see a lot of young horses will plunge into the collar. Now there's ways that we prevent them doing that, but that's what a lot of young horses will do. Because obviously they've never felt weight like it and then you've got the shards up the side and all that type of thing. So there's lots of things we do to prevent that jerking and plunging and rearing, you know, to try and get the carriage to move forward. Because they're not just gently standing on all fours and just leaning forward and and start the movement of the vehicle that way if you ever picked up a, the handles of a barrow you know a wheelbarrow full of well, a heavy load whatever it might be bricks rubble earth concrete you don't push your hands forward do you you uh, what you do is you push your body weight forward and by pushing your body weight forward, your hands go behind you, past your, past your back. And, um, and then the barra starts to move slowly. In it. Pull them over off. That's it. I'm just getting Steph to come in here because this horse is bad at standing. Oh, it's getting better at standing now. And that there, see, so it just rested its leg then for a second, which was absolutely beautiful. It was lovely. Um, that's it. So, what Steph has done, she's been with me quite a bit now, and she's, you know, no fool when it comes to driving. Walk. Walk. So, you see that? That was lovely. So, without me telling her anything, I can give this, give you the commentary and explain what we're doing. But as soon as that car went, you, you don't really want to take this away from a horse of using its brain. So the car went, and she went, well, that must be why we've been waiting here. So now I'm going to take the cart forward. But she can't do that. You cannot allow her to do that. You must look at the horse as the motive power. That's all it does is provide the power. Because if, for instance, in that you let the horse do that, just what's going to happen when you get an electric car just overtaking someone on a bike? Yeah. Bear in mind the horse as well when it's wearing blinkers loses 80% of its vision. With its left eye, 
it can see over its right quarter. So obviously 80% of its vision is gone. So any other hazards or problems that are coming from the side wouldn't see. So you could have someone just coming up to you, for instance, going to ask you to weigh or could you help me or I'm like, whatever, right? A child, a dog, whatever. You can't have the horse walk forward until it's instructed to do so or asked to do so. Um, and so many times you see, and I hear people say all the time, which is absolutely, the horse is not trained properly. I'm sorry to be so, it sounds almost like arrogance. It's not that. It's, I hear all the time, oh, uh, my horse likes to, you know, it's all right if it can trot for a mile or two and I don't hold it back, it's fine. That's not fine. That's no good at all. What it should do is do what you asked it to do when you asked it, and then you're safe on the public highway. If you get horse that you can't hold when it's trotting or it's difficult to hold as it comes out the yard or anywhere and gets anywhere, whether it's up a, a track, a green lane or whatever, the same rules apply, it must do what you asked it, not what it thinks it should do. So, I see that motor car gone past there. Now you see this? Pouring the ground. Now we'll make it stand here. So, the, so what happened now? I'll just explain that because it's very interesting. That car has just gone. Um, that car has just gone past us. And again, you know, the first car, right? It went to walk away. This car is gone and it went, well, I can't walk away, so I'll pull the ground. But that's no good, so we'll just make it stand there. Just ask it to stand there, right? Reins are not being pulled too tight. Reins are not being pulled too tight. But just being held there like that, that's it. Now when it goes to move, Steph will just check it. But she's not pulling the reins. There's a certain amount of slack in the traces. Anyone that drives understands that. So when the horse moves forward, it's applying the weight to itself. It's not because it's being pulled back. So as this horse, you see the traces are slack and just hang in there. So it's got, and you can see there, the tug is in forward of the pad, just on the edge front of the edge of the pad. So it's got about six inches movement, maybe four and a half, six inches. So when this car goes, if it moves forward, Steph won't pull the reins, but if the horse thinks, well, it must be time to go now and moves forward, it moves itself on to the bit. So at each, each half an inch it moves, as its body moves forward, it will be, it will restrain itself. Whereas Steph pulled it, it's not learning anything. But you can see it standing there now with a rubber bit on a slack rein. When I say slack, I'm just going to move these gently. Can you see, look, it's slack. It's not, uh, and look at the lovely head carriage on it on a soft rubber bit. Yeah, it's not being held there. Beautiful head carriage. You know, for the type of horse it is. It's not a bloody Gelderlander or Frisian horse, is it? And it's got a very short neck as it happens. <laughs> so that's absolutely lovely. And it's the patience. I know, you know, people say to me, how do you do it, how do you do it? Of course I've got experience, all I've done all my life is horses. Um, so, it, you know, obviously you learn, but I'd gladly pass on anything I've learnt to anybody. We're going to be bringing out a series of films on that very thing, so we'll do some one on reins and how reins work, um, and team reins, and then harnessing and then all the basics right up but we're going to do lessons on what we do when the horse arrives in the yard you know as soon as it arrives in the yard so because people keep asking us all the time you know what, what do you do in a case like this what do you do in a case like that so Ree's now compiling the most popular questions and we're going to make a film relating to each of those questions so this girl now is standing absolutely lovely, just on a slack rein. There's no pressure holding her head and she'll stand there all day like that, which is beautiful, which is exactly what we're looking for. And when she walks away, we don't want her to snatch away. 
Years ago, they used to have different devices on the traces to allow a smooth pull away when you was carrying passengers. You know, a coachman would have that on his, you know, um, on his harness, so there wasn't a snatch. You know, with a young horse, um, it would just lay its weight on the collar and walk forward, so the pull was very gentle. So they'd put all sorts of devices. Um, you'll see sometimes on a good quality gig, you'll see a spring behind the spreader bar which separates the shafts uh, on the back of that and some pigtails coming through so that it would have a spring basically on the on the traces that would take the snatch so instead of a it would just bend the spring slightly and the pull away would be much gentler and you could have them on all there's all sorts of devices like that so standing there really nice been there a minute or so too so maybe three so that's a good time to move off this motor car's come so the same rules apply and it's standing there lovely so now we'll walk so all we're going to say is sorry Steph go on walk walk and see that lovely pull away no jerk you can tell by the film It's got to walk now, it cannot. Well, you can do whatever you, whatever you like. Anybody that owns a horse is up to them, isn't it? But you see, if this horse now thought, well, I'm going to trot now, it's no good. It's got to walk until it's asked to trot because it might be a, a problem that it can't see, and even if it could, wouldn't know how to deal with it. So that's the difference between driving and sitting behind a horse. There's lots of people who've got a pony or a horse and sit behind them, but they don't actually drive them. You've got to be reading the road, looking at the situation, knowing what's coming, like this car coming here now, we know we want to get up here a bit. So, you know, we're going to get up here and, and come to this little bit of a lay-by. Put them right over there, Steph. We'll use this little bit here, Steph, just put them right in there. So what we're going to do now, is not much of a lay-by here, so we're going to push the horse into the foliage, so it tickles it down its side. Can you see it touching it? Yeah? And use that, that's another little lesson it's had. So the foliage down the side would can upset horse, make no mistake, especially this time of year when the trees are off. You take this shrub here, for instance, it's very twiggy all the way along here. So that sort of thing would be on its head, its neck, its body, if we have to pull over. Now, if you pull over and you've never done that in training and you have to do that, or the person that owns it has to do it when it goes home, could just set the horse off, you know, something it's never felt and never tried. So we try and cover every possible base like that again you can see the twigs moving you can hear them down the side of the vehicle thank, thank you. you very much and people are very kind you know really we never have any trouble with motor cars and you can say to me well of course I know you you've been there for years and you do well there's a lot of people that just use you know come out for a drive on a Sunday all around these pretty lanes and cottages and villages Sunday Saturday in the week especially in the summer you get all sorts of people you know tourists People from all over the world come round to the old English country pub. <laughs> so yeah, so you take her onto a trot now when you're ready. Trot. 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 So there you can see there exactly not used to Steph's voice, used to me. Or re. Um but it's doing what steps asked and we just want it to trot we don't want it to trot fast we don't want it to trot slow we just want that steady working trot it's lovely um, straighten her head up on this horse is not an easy thing to do because um, it's not a case of giving with one mane and pulling with the other because if you touch her mouth in the wrong way she'll come across the road that's not an easy thing to do but just by letting off the left rein very slightly yeah um, there you are, she'll come, you see, much straighter in the neck, can you see, a look up there, whereas before she's laying her head, now she's only laying her head to that side because she's having a look across the field here, etc, um, so yeah, that's all going well now.